Hello guys, today's video is going to be a little vlog about the Greater Boston Yarn Crawl 2022. This is my first year doing a yarn crawl, so I'm very excited to visit all these different local yarn stores in Massachusetts and surrounding the Boston area. So I'm going to show some video clips of the stores I'm visiting. Today's Friday, day one for me, and it's going to be a good weekend. Also, a short clip about what I'm wearing. This is my sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I finished this last spring right at the end of the winter, so I didn't really get to wear it. So last sweater I knit last winter and first sweater I'm wearing this fall. So I made it from knitting for all of heavy merino and knitting for all of soft silk mohair in the shade Pearl, which is this really nice gray color. And you can see that halo and it's very nice. The collar normally folds up um, this is how the pattern is written for the collar to sit like this. I kind of prefer it folded in, so that's how I'm going to wear it. And yeah, this is my Friday yarn crawl outfit. Today is day two of the Greater Boston Yarn Crawl. So we're on the road today. We're heading to the towns of Needham and Newton here in Massachusetts. We're gonna try and hit three different local yarn stores. So can't wait to show you guys what I find. So it's still day two. I was looking at my passport and you need to visit 10 shops or more to get entered for their grand prize raffle drawing. And I just realized with my plan for tomorrow and the number of shops I've already visited today and yesterday, I need to go to one more. So last minute unplanned trip to one that's luckily pretty close to my apartment. So I'm off and we'll see you there. Good morning, it's day three, Sunday of the yarn crawl, and today we are heading into the city to visit four shops. So I'm excited, we're going to meet up with some friends today and visit some yarn shops in Cambridge, Boston, and Dorchester. All right, guys, we are back from the Greater Boston Yarn Crawl. I got a lot of stuff, like probably more than I should have, but I feel like I didn't really go into the yarn crawl thinking about how dangerous it was going to be. I mean, you put a knitter into 10 local yarn shops and they're having sales and they're having deals and they're having special events. I'm going to spend a lot of money. So I think one big takeaway is to go into the yarn crawl next year, if I do it next year, with a better plan, maybe some projects in mind. But I'm going to show you what I got. It's a lot of yarn for my stash because I am not exactly sure what to do with all of it. I also got some notions, some really cool tools that I'll show you guys. I also got a mystery bag that I'll show you. So we're going to dive right into the yarn haul. But first, I want to show you guys the little free 
gift bag that everyone who went on the yarn crawl got. I got this at the first store that I went to on Friday and it's so cute. Look, oh my gosh, it's such a cute little project bag. And at first I was like, oh, this is kind of a small project bag. I can't really fit anything I'm working on in here. But then I realized that this is the perfect size for a single ball of yarn. So although it can't fit the project, it can fit a ball of yarn and then you know you close up the string and the yarn comes out the top and then you have a cute little carrying bag for your yarn because sometimes you don't know where to put your yarn when you're working on something like tables and floors can be dirty i have a basket that i usually use at my apartment for carrying yarn that i'm working with but now i'm going to use this maybe not for everything but for at least one of my projects and i'll show you all the little pins so this is the um logo of the Greater Boston Yarn Crawl. I got pins from a few of the stores. Not every store gave away a pin, which I don't know, I feel like it would have been nice if every single store had a pin because then I could really fill up the bag. But beggars can't be choosers. I am super appreciative for all these pins. I mean, you got one, two, three, five pins. I went to 10 stores total and I got five pins and I feel like that's pretty cool. And maybe next year I'll try and go to the stores that I didn't hit this year. They had 15 stores total. I only made it to 10. I say only as if that's not a lot. <laughs> I made it to 10, but not all 15. So I'll try and prioritize the ones that I didn't go to this year, next year, so I can visit more shops, visit more local businesses. So yeah, the reason I went to 10 is because the Yarn Crawl had this grand prize drawing that they actually haven't done yet, so I don't know if I won or didn't win, but if you went to 10 or more stores, you get entered in the grand prize raffle and the prize is over $500 worth of gift cards to these local yarn stores. And they had a second tier grand prize where if you went to seven or more stores, you also got entered for, I don't remember the amount of the prize, might've been $200 worth of gift cards. So either way, I think they're pulling those drawings at the end of the month, so. I don't know, we'll see. But I was like, I wanna make it to 10 so I can get entered in the grand prize drawing. The first store I went to, I actually didn't buy any yarn, but I did get some tools. The first thing I got are the knitting barber cords, knitting cords. I don't know if you guys have heard of these before, but I've seen them on Instagram. Like people have been using them on TikTok and in reels. It's kind of like a gimmicky yarn tool, but they're really useful. So. This is a tin, it says it's the original. They're by The Knitting Barber. They're these plasticky cords. Let me pull them out. So the tin came with three and they're used for holding stitches and transferring stitches off of your needle. So this, it came with two short ones and one long one. I actually don't know the lengths. Let me try and see. Okay, so. <laughs> This is the long one. It's like pretty long. Probably could wrap around me like one and a half times. So like plenty of room to fit like a whole sweater's worth of stitches on here. But if you look closely, you can see that it's hollow. I don't know if it'll focus. Hmm. Anyways, it's a plastic cord. It's hollow. I'm sorry, it's not focusing very well but it's a little hollow plastic cord. It's got some stretch to it. And you're supposed to put the hollow end over a needle tip. And because it's like a stretchy plastic, it secures onto the needle tip without really falling off. And then you can slide all of your stitches onto it. I'm gonna show you. I brought in a little project so I could demo the barber cords. But I feel like the applications are mostly for transferring stitches like sleeve stitches when you have to put on a stitch holder. I usually thread, I don't use actual stitch holders, I usually just use scrap yarn. I usually thread a tapestry needle with a long length of scrap yarn and I pick up each stitch off the needle with my tapestry needle and just thread it onto the cord and it's fine. It doesn't take that long but something like this will be a huge time saver. So I have this DPN of stitches and let's just say the pattern called for you to put these stitches onto a stitch holder. So you take the cord, 
and you secure it onto the needle tip. And it's like, it'll come off if you like rip it, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna fly off. And basically because it's secured onto the needle, you just slide your stitches on and then you pop the needle off and your stitches are on a stitch holder like that, like so simple. And then when it comes time to putting them back on a needle, which is also difficult. If you put your stitches on scrap yarn like I do, you guys know that picking up the stitches onto the needles takes forever because the yarn is flexible. You don't have a good grip of the stitches, but okay, so I stuck it back on and to stick, to put the stitches back on the needle, you just slide it on. And there's that, super useful. Very happy I got these. They came in a whole rainbow of colors I picked blue, I honestly couldn't decide what color I wanted. I picked blue probably because it matched my nails. Um, I don't know, I was into blue at the time. So yeah, that was my first thing that I got. What else? A lot of the stores had a free giveaways and one of the stores I went to, I didn't end up purchasing anything, but they gave away a little tapestry needle when they stamped your passport. So that was cool, very excited for this. It has a curved tip and I've never used a curved tip tapestry needle before. I'm excited. It's, I think it's metal. It could be plastic, but cute little free gift. Definitely appreciative of that. And then lastly, I also got the Coco Knits colorful stitch markers. These are, they're US 13 and nine millimeters. So they fit up to nine millimeter needles. And yeah, there they are. So cute. I've been looking at these for a while. I mean, I, I could have bought them at any time, but one of the stores we were going to was having a sale on Coco Knits items. So yeah, I bought these. I don't own a lot of stitch markers. I usually use scrap yarn as well to tie up little loops and use them as stitch markers. So it's always fun to upgrade your tool set and just make things easier, cuter. Sometimes if your tools are cute, it's more motivating to knit with them. So. Very excited for those, but okay, let's get into the yarn. There's lots to talk about. First here is, all right, this, I'm just gonna show it. Isn't that cute? It's so pretty. It is, we went to this one store on Saturday. It was one of the Saturday stores and they had a table in the middle of their store that was just full of this BSK fibers and I was like what does BSK stand for it definitely looks like small batch hand dyed yarn just because you can tell the label um you know this is not like a corporate brand of yarn and apparently this is dyed by someone who works at that yarn store so they carry that line of yarn at the store and I was like okay well I have to get something because um local dyer small business I'm all about supporting that so this is a DK cashmere blend. It is 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and 80% merino. It is 230 yards. It says it's machine washable and you dry it flat. So that's pretty cool. It's probably because it's super wash merino, although it doesn't say super wash on it, but it is really soft. And I'll show you guys the color. I just fell in love with the color. They had a basket of purples and Purple is one of my favorite colors. I'm just like instantly drawn to it when I see it. In like a sea of colors, I will always go to the purples first. And this is kind of like a tonal. I don't know if you can tell. It's not like a flat dye. It's definitely like a tonal purple. I got one skein because I was trying to be conservative with my spending at the early stores that I went to just because I knew I had so many to go to. And if I bought tons of yarn at every store. I would have been, my wallet would have been crying at the end of the weekend. So I got one skein of this. I don't have a project in mind for it. It's definitely enough to make a hat, maybe a cute cowl, could be mittens. Um, so we'll see, but very excited for this. And let's see, what else did I get? Okay, so there was this other store that I went to. And they had on display this really pretty multicolored shawl. Actually not a shawl, it's more of like a triangle scarf. And I'll like overlay a video of it there. And it was rainbow and I don't know, I'm a neutrals gal. I'm not really drawn to rainbow colors a lot or 
bright, big colors, but for some reason, I was just super drawn to this scarf that they had on display. So they had it strategically placed. So they had the scarf and then they had the balls of yarn that were used to make it right next to it. It was this whole basket of multicolored yarn. And I was talking to the woman who worked there and she was like, oh yeah, that's a really nice pattern. It, the yarn felt super nice. Like I was feeling the sample of the scarf and it was just super soft and drapey. She was like, yeah, you only need three balls of yarn in that basket to make the scarf. And I was like, okay, deal. That sounds great. So I bought these three balls. And the lady at the store was also telling me that contrasting colors really help make the scarf pop. The way the pattern uses slip stitches with the self-striping yarn, um, really kind of mesmerizing. And I tried to pick colors that I thought would go well together. This is totally out of my comfort zone for projects. Um, but I picked colors more on like the muted end. So this one here, really pretty. Like I kind of want to get more of just this color and make something with just this. It's kind of beachy, summery vibes with the light blues and the oranges. And this yarn is by Scopel? Schopel? I wish I knew how to pronounce it. I'll have to look it up for the next video, but I believe it's a German company. And this is 100% virgin wool. It is super soft for wool, like, and it looks like it's two ply. So I also got this color here. This one, now this one's kind of giving me Halloween vibes. So we got summer vibes, Halloween vibes. And then this here, like I said before, I'm a purple gal, so the purple, and it has kind of like pink and like mauve and green in it. And it's cool because each of the tags sort of show you what the ball looks like knit up. So I'll show you each colorway in their tags which is pretty cool. I don't know what people normally use this yarn for, but the pattern of the scarf is called The Shift by Andrea Mowry. So I'm gonna make that with this. I think this will be a nice project, like a good palette cleanser because I do a lot of stockinette knit sweaters, big sweaters, um, and this will be, and I use a lot of neutral colors. So this will be a nice like, ooh, fun, colorful color work. I haven't done color work in a long time, so. That'll be a really fun project and good salesmanship of the worker at the store. She did a good job, but I was super excited to buy these. And then also when I checked out at the store, I didn't know that they were having a deal, but I guess they were giving away free gifts. Maybe there was like a minimum spend, but I'm not sure. But she packed up my yarn and then she also threw this into the bag. And I was like, oh, thank you. So this is the Fiber Co the Fiberco Luma, a lofty blend of organic cotton, linen, merino wool, wool, and silk. So that's cool. This is also really soft and it has that nice kind of bouncy texture. I believe this is also a DK weight and it's kind of like a cream color. I don't know how much is in this. It's 50 grams, 137 yards. So yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but I'll add it to my stash. It's a DK weight, so is this, so who knows? Maybe I will combine them both. Okay, oh, I forgot in the tools. I totally forgot to go over something else I got. So I'm gonna backtrack and go to the sock blockers that I got. So if you watched my first podcast, you guys knew that I was starting my first knit sock. And I'm gonna talk about them more in my next like official podcast, but spoiler alert, I finished the socks. So I have just one on the blocker, the other one finished, I left it somewhere else. But yeah, so when you finish knitting a sock, it like looks really weird because especially down at like the ankle and the heel, it gets very bunched up. And I knew I wanted to block the socks. So the first store I went to had sock blockers. So I was like, oh, I knew I want them. They're here. So I picked them up. These are size small because they're for my feet and my feet are small. So I think I'm going to have to get another size medium, which will probably fit more people because I do plan on making more socks. I would love to gift them to friends and family. Um, my husband would need a medium if I made him socks. I'm sure a lot of my friends would need mediums. Um, 
So my first pair of sock blockers. Can't wait to get more. They work really well. Basically, you just wet your sock. Um, I use wool wash, ukulele and wool wash when I block my things. So I soaked the sock for about half an hour and then, you know, you just stretch it on. And yeah, and then you have this gorgeous looking sock. Like this looks store-bought where before it looks not that good. Anyways, so sock blockers, great knitter's tool. They make them in wood and in plastic. Some are adjustable sizing. I like the metal because I know it won't deform shape. It won't have any effect from getting wet all the time. I really liked how these came with hangers. So I hung them on my countertop. You can hang them in your closet and they dried in like a day. So A plus for that. Okay, back to the yarn. Probably the most exciting yarn purchase of the weekend. We went to one store and they were doing mystery grab bags in the back of the store. So they had this big Rubbermaid container of these paper bags. I'll show you. So we got our mystery yarn bag. They were only $5 each. And when we walked into the store, we were greeted by one of the employees and they were like, yeah, make sure you check out our grab bag box in the back. All the bags are $5. They could have a yarn inside ranging from a value of like 10 to $30. And she then told us kind of like with a wink, she was like, but most of them are more like $30 value. So when I was shopping around, I was like, okay, definitely gonna grab a grab bag, you know, $5, easy, easy purchase. So I got my mystery bag of yarn and I was with two friends when I went. So it was really fun. We each got a grab bag. And then as soon as we left the store, we were like ripping them open. We're like, oh, we got to see what's inside. So I opened up mine and lo and behold, I got this gorgeous skein of tweed Iran wool. This is the Queensland collection. Kathmandu, Kathmandu, again, pronunciation. I should probably look these up before I film, but it says this is a luxurious merino silk and cashmere tweed. Show it up close. So it's in a ran weight and it's nice. I feel like tweed is having a moment now. Like Petite Knit released her Louvre sweater a while ago, but she recently has been posting pictures of it in like a tweedy yarn. I'm trying to think what else has tweed in it. I just, I haven't knit anything in tweed and I want to. So this is exciting. Oh, also it has the price tag still on it. It says it retails for $27.50. So that's awesome. It's 85% wool, 10% silk, and 5% cashmere. I've never owned cashmere before and now I own at least two skeins of it. Not, not entirely cashmere, but you know, partially. It definitely makes a difference, like these are so soft. So yeah, I don't have a project for this yet. Could be a really cool hat. Um, I don't know. One skein projects are not my expertise. So if you have any ideas for one skein projects, please let me know. So I have DK and then I also have Aran, so, or Aaron, wait, it's Aaron. I can't pronounce things. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you have great one skein projects or if you have ideas for like ways I can combine all three of these. That would be cool. So mystery bag was a plus. I kind of wish I got more than one mystery bag, but next year, next year's yarn crawl, I'm gonna prioritize going to that store with a mystery bag. All right, next purchase. So a lot of stores were prioritizing local yarns, local dyers, which I really loved. You know, we're here in Boston and I guess there's a lot of both spin, wool spinning places, wool, yarn spinning companies, as well as farms like alpaca farms and wool farms and a lot of indie dyers in the area. So there were a couple stores I went to where they were showing off a lot of local yarns, like one of the stores, the store where I bought these for the scarf had a whole table of New England based yarns and they were so nice. There was this really nice rustic looking cabled sweater that they had on the table made with the local yarn. And I took a video of that. I'm definitely saving that, you know, for future use, um, for future project ideas. And one of the stores that I went to on Sunday, a different store had a 
discount on locally dyed or locally sourced yarns. So I've been meaning to try this brand for a while. I follow her on Instagram. It's called East Coast Yarn Company or East Coast Yarn Co. And she's based here in Boston, Massachusetts. She dyes yarn and she has some really nice colorways. She posts a lot of reels of her dyeing the yarn and it's just really mesmerizing. And I never really knew what to do with hand dyed indie yarn because it's so colorful, it's so beautiful. But for me, like I love looking at it. I love seeing the colors and I love the colors, but for actually wearing it and practicality wise, I'm more of a neutrals girl. So if I bought a lot of hand dyed colorful yarn, I wouldn't know what to do with it until I started knitting socks. So I'm very glad that I'm enjoying the yarn, the excuse me, the sock knitting experience because now I have an excuse to buy all these hand dyed indie yarns and all these like crazy colorways because I would love to have colorful socks. You know, I don't need neutral socks. I can buy those anywhere. So I got this skein of yarn from East Coast Yarn Co. at one of the shops in Boston. And this is their fingering weight sock yarn in the color Oh My Gourd like a pumpkin gourd, you know, fall theme. And it's just so cool. It gives me such fall vibes. Like the name of the colorway is very fitting. And yeah, it has sort of like a green and orange main colors, but you can see they're like speckles. So I have no idea how this is gonna knit up. I'm definitely making socks with these. I'm thinking that I'm gonna cast them on as soon as I can. I want to make socks for my husband so i think i'm gonna do this yarn i don't know what it's gonna look like knit up i feel like that's half the surprise of dyed yarn like this like will this be speckly will this be stripey will this be you know more color like splashes with like the cream base so stay tuned for that project i'm excited to see how this turns out and yeah it's so soft it's so soft yeah, getting into hand dyed yarns is gonna be dangerous for my wallet as well. But like you're supporting small businesses, you're supporting local artists. So I feel like that's a good reason <laughs> to buy them. So yeah, East Coast Yarn Co, check them out on Instagram. All right, moving on to the big purchase of the weekend. So Sunday I decided I would allow myself to buy one sweater's quantity worth of yarn if I saw something that caught my eye. And recently I've been talking with my husband about making him another sweater. I previously made him the zipper sweater by Petite Knit and I kind of want to make him something else. I have a lot of sweaters on cue for myself so I think I just wanted an excuse for another project but when you gift it to someone, it's kind of like, oh yeah, I can do that. No problem. I'll just add it to my list. So he said he wanted like a brown tweed sweater. And I was like, oh, tweed. Yes. So at the last store I went to on Sunday, they had this yarn and I'm going to grab it. And I'm very excited to show you guys. So this is Rowan Felted Tweed. And if you notice, that's what I have behind me here, stacked up all prettily. So look at how cute this is. This is the color Camel. It is a brown base and it has these really nice tweedy flecks. It's definitely got like a rustic vibe. And some of the flecks are blue and white. And my plan is to knit the Hanstholm sweater by Petite Knit. It's just a basic raglan sweater. It's a men's sweater. I've never knit well, I guess I did knit the petite knit zipper sweater, man, but I've never knit just a plain raglan sweater. So I'm curious if like the shaping is dramatically different from a woman's raglan sweater, but I think it'll look really nice in this. This is a DK weight. They say it's a light DK weight. So I'm hoping that it knits up well. The pattern calls for Pier Gint, which is a DK weight yarn that I actually have in my stash. So I was comparing like the the yarn size and the Pure Gint is actually a little bit thicker than this. So I'm hoping that this swatches up well and I can still knit the sweater in the same needles. If anything, it'll make it drapier, which I feel like is a big appeal for a knit sweater to have it very like light and flowy and not like thick and stiff. So it's a light DK weight yarn. Each ball is 50 grams. 
and I'm trying to find the fiber content. Oh, here we go, the fiber content. This is 50% wool, 25% alpaca, and 25% viscose, which I assume the viscose is what the Tweedy Flex are. Usually Tweedy Flex are either Donegal or viscose or sometimes rayon, where the base of the yarn is like a wool. Um, I'm excited because there's alpaca in this. Alpaca washes beautifully. Like I was feeling this in the store and it was just like, it's not the softest yarn I've ever felt, but it is, you know, it's got some nice texture to it. But when I saw that I had alpaca, I was like, okay, I know that'll wash well. I have another alpaca piece that once I washed and blocked it, it like got so soft. Like as I was knitting it before I washed it, I was like, oh, this is kind of itchy. I don't know if I'll like it, but then I washed it and it was like so nice. So I'm excited to start this. I got eight balls of it. I wasn't sure how many I needed for the sweater. I think I'm making him a size medium. Um, because I kind of bought this last minute at the store. I wasn't really planning on buying it. I didn't really research it ahead of time. So I did some quick math at the store and I was like, okay, eight should work for his size. But then I came home and checked Ravelry. A couple other people had made the sweater in size medium with the same exact yarn and they only used six balls. So I may have two extra balls of this when I'm done. I'm not complaining about it because I don't know, lots of cool projects I can make. Maybe like a slipover for myself, which would be cute and like matchy, or of course like hats are always an option. So this was my big spend of the weekend. And yeah, overall the yarn crawl was awesome. It was definitely tiring, you know, driving around, but got to see a lot of cool places. You know, the foliage is changing here. So it's really pretty, lots of fall vibes going around. It was really cool to learn about all the different yarn stores in the area you know otherwise I would not have probably visited them and now I know of a couple that are pretty close to my apartment that I would definitely shop for in the future you know I didn't go with many projects in mind but I took pictures of yarns that I was really interested in so when I do have projects that come up that I need more yarn for I'll refer to them you know lots of I'm trying to buy more like local yarns or smaller business yarns rather than the big corporate brands just to branch out and try new things and yeah, next year, I don't know if I'll do the full yarn crawl again. I think maybe I'll go to a few of my favorite stores that I saw this past weekend and definitely hit up the ones that I didn't get to this weekend that were a little farther away from me. But yeah, every store I went to, all the workers were super nice and helpful. A lot of them have classes. A lot of them even offer help with knitting projects. Like they had advertisements on the wall saying if you bring in a knitting project that you're stuck on or need help with, they'll do consultation hours and help you fix those. Um, definitely saw a lot of people in the crawl, like the stores were crowded. So it's great to see that there are lots of other knitters in the community and got the cute bag out of it. I think this was my favorite part. Like, oh, it's so cute. And it's like such a cool memory token. Uh, so yeah, that was my experience for the Greater Boston Yarn Crawl. My name's Amy, thank you for listening. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Um, would love if you subscribed to my channel. I'm just starting out. This is only my second video, but definitely more to come. You know, more podcasts, more things, maybe going through yarn stash, talking about knitting ideas. So would love to have you. Thank you for watching, guys. Mystery bag ASMR. Ooh, it's inside.